I start by drawing the future helmet. This helps me learn about shape, curves and dimensions before I start working with metal. I decided to rethink the concept of the original helmet design. The crown will be removable and the visor will open. With the help of my drawing, I made a pattern and cut it out using 30 HDSA steel 2 mm thick. I bend future bottom of the helmet with brass. Then I replace the strikers with a convex and a pit and shape the upper part. The press is certainly strong, but it is more convenient to work on some of the nuances by hand. In the course of the work, I remove the flutes that are trying to form at the edges. I made a device from a cut pipe for a hand press. This method makes it easier to roll it into the cylinder. And considering that I have not just a flat sheet, but a shape with bulges, it is very difficult to twist this with my hands. I start working with heating. In this state, steel is like plasticine and can be bent into complex shapes. I heat with oxygen and propane. For sheet steel, this method is much easier and faster than a furnace fired with coal or just propane. Heating occurs in a local area and the rest of the part remains cold. First, it returns its general shape and does not twist from work. And second, you can hold the cold part with your hands. Pay attention to which striker with a hemisphere I'm working on. This is a very important tool in the armor workshop. It allows putting the helmet on it and working easily on areas that you cannot get in without such a tool. Check the detail with my design and make a pattern for the top of the helmet. I cut it out of the same steel as the first part, 30 HDSA steel 2 mm thick. This will be a rounded cone, so at first I give it a slight bulge all over the surface. The jackhammer does the planishing for me. Also a very important tool in the workshop. For making ammo it is more useful than the press, saves a lot of time. After planishing I sharpen the edges a little, so that the details align. Then I made tags around the perimeter. Now I reduce the angularity of the shape. In such an assembly it is easier and faster than trying to make individual parts perfect and then weld them. Having corrected the shape, I proceed to the main welding. After that I remove the welding with a stone circle and the petal one. And finally I remove all the hints that this is not a one-piece skull, but two parts that are welded. And we have such an ordinary bassinet. Yes, the base for the helmet of the king of the wild hunt is quite an ordinary European helmet from the 15th century. Although it will have a cutout almost like a bar butte. This is also 15th century helmet. Now I started to work on the visor. 
I transfer the main lines of the mask to the helmet in order to understand what the pattern should look like. With the help of the editing magic, I turn ordinary paper into a 30 AGSA steel 2mm thick and draw the lines of the skull. I try to take into account that part of the face is curved at the edges and the pattern will be wider than the picture. First, I forge the cold detail, lightly shaping the main convex. But most of the work can only be done with heated steel. At first, I outline the eyebrows on the cold detail. Heating makes the markings disappear. Having received the rough eyebrows and the nose, I make the eye sockets. At this stage, I redraw the main lines and trim off the excess from the mask. Now I can work on more details on all the bumps and grooves. Screen, I try the mask on the skull and keep it in such a way that it fits the helmet. I made sure that the eye sockets are exactly opposite the ones painted on the helmet and cut them out with a grinder. Now I need to fix the visor to the skull. To do this I make holes in the side parts. I fix the visor with bolts. Now you can see that the horns and other parts do not fit with the helmet well. To correct this, I weld the visor in the places that touch and begin fixing everything that does not fit. I remove the welding and remove the visor, which now exactly replicates the skull. This is the lower part of the mask that is shaped into teeth. I forge the gums after studying how it looks on the original, as well as on the anatomical images of real skulls. You know, doing this kind of work, I feel like I am gradually acquiring the skills of an artist and a sculptor. And I understand why so much time is devoted to the knowledge of the structure of the skeleton and muscles to draw people. After processing the gums, I shape the nasal cavity, making the skull more realistic. This is a plate 3 mm thick. I mark the future teeth with a marker and shape the relief with a grinder. A fact that you might not know, in the Witcher's universe, elves did not have fangs, unlike humans. There are no fangs on the face of the helmet as well. Although, to intimidate miserable Hoine, humans, a mask with fangs could have been made. I even tried to draw it like that, but then the design began to smell like all sorts of snotty vampires. Therefore, with this detail I stuck to the original. I weld the teeth using electric welding. In some places, the gums and teeth do not touch each other, so I fix these gaps and align them to each other with heating. I clean the scale with a steel brush and now we can admire the result. Cool teeth, the dream of every senior.
you can't break them and you can also scare your grandchildren. I know how I will be fooling around in senile marasmus. Subscribe or you will miss it. At this stage I do the annealing of steel. To do this I put the helmet in the oven and heat it up to 800 degrees and leave it to cool overnight. When it cools slowly, the stresses that have been formed from forging and welding disappear in the steel. If this is not done, the metal may crack from further work or after hardening. When I was making Garantir's helmet, I was late with the annealing and the eye sockets cracked a little when I was cutting them with a chisel. Now I also cut out the eye sockets and the metal is very soft and viscous, it does not crack. After the chisel, the edge needs to be treated with a file. Here the annealing has a positive effect as well, it is easier and more pleasant to file. I bend the edge of the eye sockets outward. From the point of protection of against a thrusting blow, there is a chance that such an edge will stop the blade if it slides on the mask. But of course, it will not save if the blow is directed straight in the eye socket. This is where my authority ends. The stage of making the crown has come. The crown will be made of mild steel 2.5 mm thick and it will be removable. It is easy to cut straight lines with a grinder and difficult if the lines are curved. It is easier to do this if the cutting disc is not new but already ground off with a smaller diameter. Take note of this and always renew the burrs after cutting. I attach the band with a technique you already know. I fixed the center and side parts with the bolts and forged them to the helmet with heating. A very simple and effective way. The band perfectly follows the shape of the skull and visor with horns. Leave a like if you have never made armor, but you already know how to make helmets. I've cut the parts of the teeth of the crown, this is also mild steel 2.5 mm thick. In a special device I bend it in the middle with heating and give a rough shape to all the plates. Each piece is heated two times. It would have been possible to do this on the press, but I wanted a distinctive hot forging surface. After polishing it will be clearly visible. I fix the rib on the chisel. I make it smooth and create the surface of the forged product. is done and eight remain. Now all the horns need to be welded to the band. A special welding magnet helps me with this. The difficulty is that I don't want to weld it outside so I won't have to clean the weld later. And inside there is no place to go in with the welder's nozzle. But somehow I managed to stick everything together. It's not what you would call a full-fledged weld, but the crown is not fighting part, so it doesn't need to withstand the blows. The places that didn't fit perfectly on the band I forged with heating.
The grooves I am making now are very similar to the ribs in the Maximilian ammo, only the other way around. The ribs were outward and mine are inward. I center punch for the holes for riveting the straps and the leather for the helmet liner. Check out how I have used the GoPro to take macro shots. It's not supposed to be used like that. I weld all the joints from the inside. Basically, the shape of the helmet is complete and the work is almost done. And this is the chin detail. Yes, where there is a gap in the helmet instead of the chin, there will be a dangerous hole through which your teeth will be broken in fight. Just as on the top, there will be teeth on the bottom too. I shape the gum of the bottom the same way I did on the top. First, I work with cold detail and then I hit it. I weld it with a magnet as well. The chin will be removable. I will fix it to the helmet with bolts. Now I put my helmet into the oven and heat it up to 830 degrees Celsius. I quench on water because it is 30 HGSI steel. This is why I use water instead of oil. After quenching, I make sure to do tempering at 270 degrees. I leave it for half an hour and dip it in water. After hardening, the entire surface of the helmet is dull with scale, both inside and outside. I got such a budding drum. The device is similar to a concrete mixer, but a little different. Inside there are small stones that in theory should remove the scale of the helmet when the drum rotates. I close it tightly and start it. Unfortunately, everything did not go so smoothly. The skull of the helmet was hitting the ribs inside the drum because of its size. So, I took it out after an hour of work so as not to scratch it. As you can see, the scale is almost not gone. I have to remove it with a grinder. I left the visor to keep spinning. After three hours, I took it out and it had to be washed from the dirt that was created in the drum. The thing is that I added water and it became easier to remove the scale. It got better, but there was dirt. After cleaning, it was obvious that in some places the surface is clean, but in the grooves the surface is still black. I am scraping the entire surface with scotch bright to clean the surface. So far I have not been very impressed with the pebble. I have to keep experimenting. I continue polishing using the motor and petal discs. After the petal, I bring it to a mirror shine with felt and goy paste.
I've been thinking for a long time about what to etch on this helmet, but I did not like all my ideas. They were trivial and not very appropriate. So, I decided to go off on detail that isn't by Canon anyway. And that's where I'm going to write everything I was ashamed to write the helmet itself. About Siri, who was chased by the wild hunt and why she was chased. And about miserable humans that the elves did not like. And there's a couple of words about Geralt. Of course, the Wild Hunt riders don't like this lusty bastard, he's really hurting them. I even depicted a hog, the symbol and nickname of Eredin himself in the language of unicorns. And of course, the main message for the studio that created The Witcher. Yes, cyberpunk is good, but not quite. Yes, they made a Witcher TV show, but it's a frank miscast and failure in terms of plot. That's why we need a fourth part of the Witcher. The final assembly was left. For this I prepared a spring with button. This is to lock the visor in a closed position. It is made out of titanium and I don't have to temper it. These are chin straps. They keep the helmet on the head during the fight. Leather straps for sewing on the helmet liner. This way the padding is fixed in the right places and doesn't slip off. Bolts in the shape of spikes. They will be used to screw on the chin guard. And this detail I made behind the scenes. This element of armor is called a rondel and it will attach the crown. The visor with chin guard. The crown, as I said, will be removable and will be secured to the helmet with a rondel. And of course the skull itself. All the holes are pre-drilled in it for riveting the other parts. This is the final stage of the work. I am riveting rivets for fixing the visor. I do it from the inside and beautiful semicircular cup lies in a semicircular pit on the small anvil. I check how the visor closes, how the crown fits and mount the jaw. happened so that I was able to do a photo shoot of this helmet along with a full gothic style harness. The first thing that catches my eye as an armorer is the intentionally integrated crown spikes into the helmet. They make it impossible for the weapon to slip on impact. The spikes are a bonus for the enemy in wrestling, you can catch them and make a throw. And now I am reassembling the helmet into a tournament format. The crown will be interfere and the jaw should be protected. The next thing I'd point out is the gap in the mouth area. Totally pointless technical solution for such a helmet. All the stops will go through and that's fatal. Also, leaving a hole in the neck and chin with this visor is even more bizarre. What is wrong with this visor? When viewed from the outside, we can't see any mechanisms for raising the visor. At some point in the game, Eredin removes it and it completely separates from the helmet. Most likely the developers didn't think through the locking mechanism itself. But let's assume that it is there, and most likely it is complex. The more complex is the thing, the more chances it has to break quicker. But there is still a problem with this visor. It's the big eye sockets where an arrow and witcher's blade could easily fly in. It turns out that the visibility is blocked, but the visor does not provide adequate protection. I tested the helmet in medium strength, 
The steel is 2 mm thick and if you hit it with full force, it will be a bit damaged. You can clearly see that the chin stops the stabbing, although there is a chance to go through the gap between the teeth. If it is not in the eye socket itself, the tip gets stuck in the rim which I made on purpose. Without it, the tip would go into the eye easily, just sliding along the visor. And here is a clear example of why you should not make hollows in the visor. The blade gets stuck in the nose and does not slip transmitting all the inertia. That's why many medieval helmets are shaped so that the tip easily slides to the side. If you give a good pull on Eredin's horn, you get a great X combo from behind. Thanks to your support on Patreon and PayPal, I help Ukrainians. This is both help with necessity products as well as the help with equipping the soldiers I know. We really appreciate the support of Ukraine by the countries of the world. Thank you so much.